Hey, Dan Meyer here, and today we're going to have some really good nerd fun, right? So get your data geek on and get ready to learn about how to bring analytics dashboards back to life. When I first started my career back at Wells Fargo doing a lot of data analyst stuff, I was one of the first people to really get into business dashboards. I was right there at the beginning. And in the last 15, 20 years, dashboards have gone crazy, much, much more relevant, much more popular. They're everywhere. People are using them to run their businesses, but they've gotten a little stale. They also can be, in the most part, pretty manual to build. They can also be very historical, very backward looking. It's very, very rare when you see a very dynamic, powerful business dashboard that's doing predictive analysis. These are kind of the things that have kind of put business dashboards a little bit less popular. We still all do them, but we're not so excited about them anymore. But I want to share with you this really cool article I came across by a woman named Mary Shacklett. And it's like, are analytics dashboards dead? Here's how to bring them back to life. So that was a great article. I found it on LinkedIn. I read it. Um, give her props to that. But I want to take some of the lessons that she shared, add my own insights, and tell you how to bring analytics dashboards back to life. Right. So this is really, really important because are dashboards beginning to outlive their usefulness is a question a lot of us are asking, right? Are we really getting the value out of them we expected? Or are we just having us do more busy work? Are they really any better than basic Excel spreadsheets when it comes to making decisions? They look flashier, they may be easier to find data, but it may not necessarily give you any real added value. And that's a question we're going to tackle, right? And this is again from my background, right? 15 years at Wells Fargo, the last 10 years as an entrepreneur, grew one of the biggest brands in analytics training in Southeast Asia, DMAI PH, um, which uh, once the pandemic has passed, I hope to get back to doing some more in-person classroom training. Um, but bottom line is analytics is something that is never gonna go away, but using dashboards is something that people have gotten a little bit like, well, what more can I get out of it? Well, here's two great quotes that I came across um, that when I was reading reading Mary's stuff, I came across a couple more quotes. The first one is, uh, without a purpose for the visualizations, the data story can be, can't be can be fully developed and can lead to erroneous data. We look at business dashboards like we used to look at Excel spreadsheets, and we can only make sense of what we ourselves see from it. A really good data visualization, a series of, of data images in a business dashboard should allow us to easily see the story behind the numbers. That's where data storytelling came out. And really data storytelling is basically taking numbers and created a narrative that people then could take action based on. Another great quote was people don't have the time or inclination to search for hidden insights. Business dashboards are supposed to make it easier. But in a lot of ways, they haven't, right? Yeah, we have more charts and graphs and visuals that we can look at, but we really can't see the insights any more or any better than we could in an Excel spreadsheet using pie charts and line graphs and so forth. So this is kind of the challenge we have. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through two parts. So this is part one of how to bring analytics dashboards back to life. And the first section we're going to talk about really are these four things. There have been new and least developments that can augment dashboard experience, it can make it more valuable, right? We're using technology to keep dashboards going forward. There are a lot of us that are still using dashboards like we were 10, 15 years ago. Where we're basically you know, uploading data, building some visuals, and pushing it out in a report. It's really not all that different than what we were doing with Microsoft Excel. 15, 20 years ago. And we thought dashboards revolutionized everything, but they're not because we're not using the newest tools. Here's the four things we should talk about. We're talking about how to make our dashboards more dynamic. We should be looking at automated analysis, right? You can't depend on a person to do all the analysis for you. You should look for ins assisted insights, right? You should have AI help you figure out what is important and you look at it and decide if it really is important to you and your business. This is something that we really need to get better at. The next thing is that we need to guide the user to take action and to make sure that the user knows what to do. It has to be a clear call to action. We can't leave it ambiguous. The next thing is you want to have a long, a long form narrative, right? We're building a big story arc for our entire business. And the dashboard should tell the story from start to finish. And the finish may be way, way out there in the future, but kind of want to think where it's going, right? Where's our goals right now for this year, for next year, for the next five to 10 years? How does a dashboard encapsulate all of it so that we know where we're at on the journey and what we have to do to get to our end goal? That's where dashboards really have values when they do that. If all they're doing is saying what you did in the past and you're showing like sales data and showing you know, employee data and so forth, it's all historic, it's really, really not taking advantage of a dashboard. So the first thing I want you to focus on 
is how to look for ways to do automated analysis. A lot of applications like Tableau, um, like Microsoft Power BI, they're getting closer and closer to really integrating AI in a significant way. But right now, they even have tools that will tell you what to do. Like one of the earliest examples of this was Tableau would tell you which map to use, right? To be able to give you an idea based on your data what you should see. And this is kind of going to take it a step further, right? We want to make sure that we're looking for new tools that can automate automatically alert us that changes in the data are there, right? Warning signs, right? When we see anomalies or see some kind of significant shift in the data, there should be a red alert, right? We should be able to program that into our dashboards so that they show us that boom right away so we don't have to stumble across them. That's just one example. Another is these assistant insights, right? Find out what, why things are happening, right? What are the causes, right? So again, you can teach um, your dashboard using artificial intelligence to be able to run analysis algorithms that will find root causes. Like what is different about these 10,000 data sets or 10,000 rows of data that was different than last month's 10,000 rows of data? What are the couple things that significantly changed your numbers? What was the root cause? Root cause analysis has been going on in business for hundreds of years, but using dashboards to be the place where we identify and then take action on root cause analysis is something fairly new. So think about that. The entire process should be machine generated within your dashboard. We have to get away from, unfortunately, humans designing dashboards ourselves. We can have the general design. We can be the ones that kind of like figure out what data goes into it. But we also want to use the benefits of machine learning to find that out as well, right? We can uncover some amazing insights if we're really able to think about how to bring our dashboards into the 21st century. Number three is you want to have a guide to user action, right? The models that you're running that populate your dashboards should have clear calls to action. So if your sales are down over the last quarter, which section of your sales program needs to be fixed? Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it a product? This kind of stuff should come out and then there should be an action. You should have some kind of, you know, cause and effect. If our sales are down in California, then the action should be, do we need more salespeople in California? That kind of cause and effect needs to come within the dashboard. Normally, it would be something where you just look at the data, you talk about it, and then you'd brainstorm in a group about how to like fix it. But you wouldn't be doing that with the data. You'd look at one data point, and then you would let the humans do brainstorm, which we should do. But we should augment that by having the machine tell us what to do as well. So we have a couple different perspectives. We have the machine looking at the raw data, then we have the people looking at their experience, looking at what they know about the business, and using that guide to be able to make actions happen. Number four is a long form narrative, right? I mentioned this before. You basically wanna think about data storytelling on a grand scale. Where is your business going and how is it going to get there? And what are the milestones? And what do you do to get there when you're, when you're falling short, you're not where you want to be? How do you catch up? How do you accelerate things? You want to make sure you combine charts and visualizations with contextual narrative to explain what happened. This is where data storytelling has to be part of analytics, right? You, if you're basically producing a business dashboard and you're just sharing that dashboard without any narrative, without any kind of long-term storytelling, you're falling short. You're just looking at what happened and you're trying to make fixes for the future based on what happened in the past, which isn't always the best thing to do. So this is where you really want to kind of bring in the data storytelling. So those are the four things that this really cool article about Mary Shacklett made me think about, right? So the idea of augment analysis, assisted insights, taking, building a guide for action, and then thinking of the long-term narrative. If you're thinking about this stuff when you're building and deploying and sharing information via your dashboard, you're thinking more than just reporting. You're thinking of guiding and directing. One of the things I learned when I was at Wells Fargo, who I was really effective at, was I was able to understand how storytelling really influences decision making. That when you have the data and the data tells you exactly what you should do, then this is how you try to influence decision makers. Now, it's not the analyst's role to make policy, but it is the analyst's role to be able to show people what's happening and what can be done to fix it and address it. You start doing some predictive modeling. You start trying to do some analysis that's more forward thinking. That's where we need to be. And we can't do that without machine learning and artificial intelligence. So that's really the, the, the whole great points that I got from Mary's article.
So what I'm going to do is in part two, we'll come back and, and do this again tomorrow. I'm going to talk about four more things about how to really improve the dashboard experience for people, right? I talked about the big picture of what our dashboard should do. Now let's take it back and make it a little more tactical. How can it actually be used by individuals to understand data when we're talking about the people in and around our business? So that's part two coming tomorrow. So again, I want to thank you for your time. If you're curious about having more analytics training, you want to learn how to really optimize your dashboard, you want to get more value out of dashboards, go ahead and hit us up at sonicva.com, S-O-N-I-C-V-A.com. Um, I still do trainings virtually and I'm looking forward to doing more trainings in person once I get vaccinated and we can travel again. So basically business dashboards are not dead um, as long as you know what to do to bring them back to life. So again, thank you for your time. Now go out there and have a great day.